Hello, this is John Kanlopoulos, an eye surgeon based in Athens, Greece, director of Laser Vision Institute, and also clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School, New York City, New York. Fascinating developments in cataract surgery. We've been working with the Lensex femtosecond laser for the last year. You're seeing here a patient applinated with a new soft fit version of the Lensex, which uh, entails a uh, special contact lens between the patient interface and the patient's uh, uh, cornea. You can see here fine-tuning the main uh, incision and the paracentesis. We're going to now center uh, the complex of the lens fragmentation and capsular axis. The capsular axis is the purple um, uh, circle, outer circle. The yellow uh, lines is the lens fragmentation. This is our own uh, technique uh, devised to be able to uh, perform the lens fragmentation all the way up to the surface right under the anterior capsule. I'm adjusting here the capsule axis. This is one of the rare occasions where the computer did not sense uh, a correct uh, depth and thickness capsule axis with the soft fit uh, uh, software and application. We had over the last year some issues with uh, attaining complete capsule axis in most cases. Um, up to now, we've performed a dozen of cases with the soft fit. Every single case has a free floating capsule axis. Here, as you can see, I'm adjusting the lens fragmentation to come more anteriorly, almost under the capsule. And this is not a problem because, as you saw before, my capsule axis is wider than the actual lens fragmentation. So there's no risk of the lens fragmentation to uh, create radial uh, ca anterior capsule uh, nicks. This is the main cornea incision, which is designed to be a three-step incision. And uh, after establishing this, we're going to OK the data and start the uh, lenses, Lensex femtosecond laser. You can see here the uh, capture X is being performed first. Uh, with the uh, soft fit uh, upgrade for the Lensex, uh, uh, you can almost tell during the surgery that you have a complete perfect uh, capture axis. Uh, following the capture axis, uh, we'll go into the lens fragmentation, which happens now. You can see. Uh, the two uh, diametric incisions, four radial uh, cuts into the lens going from down to up and they will reach a point right, right under the anterior capsule to almost uh, burp uh, the uh, gas under the anterior capsule. Here we're seeing the uh, main uh, incision which is placed at the uh, 145 degree location. Uh, from the surgeon's view here it's at the uh, uh, 4 to 5 o'clock uh, position and now the paracentesis which is placed uh, at the um, uh, 3 o'clock uh, position, uh, 9 o'clock uh, in our view here. We're done with the femtosecond laser. We're going directly right next to it. We have our operating microscope on uh, entering very easily with a cannula in the anterior chamber and placing preservative-free uh, uh, xylocaine, uh, now a little bit of epinephrine. We do get some uh, uh, constriction of the pupil after using the uh, femtosecond laser, probably from... Uh, the inflammatory process. I'm going to use viscoat here to remove uh, the uh, bubbles, but you'll see it, it floated away my capture axis. So there's no uh, capture axis present. The capture axis has folded uh, superiorly. Uh, it, it is actually inferior in our view, the surgeon's view. So I will have to go in and find where did the uh, free cap of the capture axis uh, wandered. Uh, into the anterior chamber following filling the chamber with um, viscoelastic. So I will enter here with a set of capture axis forceps, not to perform capture axis, but to try and identify where is the uh, uh, capture axis cap. Of course, I've kept both the uh, initial femtosecond laser part of the procedure and this part of the procedure uh, at real time. This is unedited. Um, so here I'm able to uh, grasp uh, the uh, free-floating capture axis. It's tricky because sometimes it contains some uh, cortical material as well and uh, thus confirming we have a free-floating capture axis here. I'm using the methocellulose to lubricate the anterior surface and reduce the patient discomfort from uh, splashing drops. And here you see our technique which is going in with viscoelastic and, and completing the lens separation with, uh, as I noted previously, um, uh, with it being very anterior, almost under the anterior capsule. So here we're separating the lens in four pieces. This is a, a medium uh, uh, density cataract. Um, it's kind of rare in our practice to see soft, uh, so soft uh, cataracts um, out here in uh, Greece. I'll uh, 
leave some of the viscoelastic out to go in and do hydrodissection now after the lens separation. And you can see now I have no fear of hydrodissecting because the, the lens has been fragmented in four pieces. And if there's any gas trapped behind uh, the fragmented cataract that will burp uh, through the uh, uh, incisions. And here the lens almost comes up. I'll put it back into place and I will complete this case. And this is for first time that you're probably seeing this with a nanosecond uh, laser for cataract. This is not a phaco probe. This is a probe that uses a nanosecond laser of the uh, uh, YAG variety. I'll enter the, capture, the uh, paracentesis here and enter with a probe. Uh, this is a coaxial probe um, the, of the nanosecond uh, laser made by uh, ARC Laser of Erlangen, Germany. Uh, the, uh, this laser is called CETUS and I have no financial interest in this company. I will go in and grasp or purchase the first quadrant of the pre-dissected cataract uh, with a femtosecond laser. And here the laser pulses uh, create enough uh, uh, mechanical impact onto the uh, lens fragment to emulsify it and then uh, further be become absorbed by the nanosecond laser probe. Uh, I, I should note that although this probe appears to be sleeved and cooled, it does not uh, develop any uh, temperature at the cornea incision. So there is no risk of cornea burns with a nanosecond laser. I'm continuing here my um, uh, emulsification and uh, uh, disassembly of the, the lens. The two last uh, quadrants come as one piece and I will very easily um, emulsify those as the lens uh, uh, is being uh, shot by the uh, nanosecond laser. You can see the, the uh, small uh, jerk uh, actions that the, this laser um, uh, performs and it, it jolts the lens, emulsifies it enough to absorb uh, the uh, fragmented pieces. I'm picking up the last uh, fragments careful not to uh, uh, incite uh, uh, movement of the posterior capsule. I'm done with the cataract removal. We're going to enter with uh, irrigation aspiration, initially uh, through the main incision, uh, as you can see here in a few seconds. Uh, the actual cataract part of the procedure took 1.2 minutes. Uh, the femtosecond laser part of the procedure took one and a half minutes. I'm entering here with the irrigation aspiration probe to remove the uh, cortical remnants. I will take the opportunity to uh, discuss with you during this time uh, the fact that uh, the nanosecond laser uh, uses almost one third to one fifth of the energy that a standard uh, fecal emulsification probe would uh, to remove the um, uh, cataract segments created by the uh, femtosecond laser. And of course, as I noted previously, without any, and I want to underline that any uh, thermal uh, development into the uh, main incision. Um, so uh, zero uh, endothelial damage due to uh, heat production from the uh, phaco probe uh, transmitted through the sleeved uh, 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 part of the probe. Uh, the nanosecond laser probe uh, is uh, sleeved just to uh, be uh, uh, familiar to the surgeon who has been uh, used to doing uh, coaxial cataract surgery. Here now in my irrigation aspiration, I'm going uh, with uh, a bimanual technique. I'm using uh, irrigation through the uh, main incision and uh, aspiration with a split probe uh, placed through the paracentesis to remove the, those areas of cortex that are not reachable uh, from the main incision. Um, this concludes uh, our cataract surgery, a little bit polishing the uh, underside of the anterior capsule and also polishing some uh, PSC um, imperfections left on the posterior capsule for which I will uh, endeavor again uh, through the main incision with the uh, coaxial irrigation aspiration probe to uh, uh, remove uh, here I uh, jumped into uh, uh, going uh, with methocellulose to inflate the uh, uh, capsule bag and through the uh, same main incision of 2.7 millimeters uh, enter with the uh, uh, D cartridge uh, uh, Monarch uh, system and uh, implant a uh, Acrosoft um, a spheric uh, intraocular lens as you will see here. Uh, this is a torque intraocular lens, 20.5 diopters, uh, T3, one and a half diopter cylinder. You may have noted at the beginning of the case that we had marked 
the steep axis of the patient. It was uh, uh, 40, uh, 35 degrees, I'm sorry, uh, of axis. And uh, here we're uh, uh, pre-rolling the lens into the D cartridge and the lens will be implanted and then uh, uh, positioned correctly onto the uh, predetermined uh, axis of cylinder. Using some of the methocellulose to lubricate the surface. Again, this patient is under uh, uh, just uh, intracamera anesthesia. He's doing a great job, not moving. We're implanting and uh, I always enjoy the uh, softness, softness and the smoothness with which the Aquasoft material unfolds into the capsule bag. Um, then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, position the lens onto the correct uh, uh, spots uh, indicated on the lens and uh, of course the axis that we had marked the cornea with preoperatively. Uh, this patient was uh, about 1.7 diopters uh, steep at the 35 degree meridian. So a little lens manipulation here before the second haptic unfolds and uh, locks the place, place lens into position. We're going to go in for a last um, irrigation aspiration after we uh, now uh, clockwise dial in the lens into the right position. You may be able to see the uh, uh, three little markings on each side of the lens and it's them being aligned to the uh, cornea marks. Again, uh, all parts of this procedure are recorded uh, and reproduced uh, for you in uh, real time. Um, there is no editing of the steps uh, we're discussing herein. Um, so um, the lens is positioned in place. We're going to go in and uh, uh, remove the uh, final uh, parts of viscoelastic and um, thus uh, complete uh, this procedure. I hope you find uh, you found this uh, material interesting. Um, this is uh, probably the first time you're being familiarized with an all laser uh, cataract procedure. Uh, femtosecond laser, the Lensix uh, Alcon femtosecond laser used uh, to uh, avoid the use of blades uh, and uh, incisional capture excess and lens fragmentation. And then the uh, Cetus uh, nanosecond laser used as the means to uh, uh, emulsify and remove the pre-dissected uh, 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 pieces of the uh, cataract prepared with a femtosecond laser. As you saw, we've reversed the steps of the uh, lens fragmentation and uh, uh, hydro dissection technique. We do first the lens fragmentation with viscoelastic and we introduced this technique at the uh, American Academy of Ophthalmology meeting in Chicago 2012 at the Lensex user meeting. Here we're using fluid to attain uh, uh, wound closure. And then as I said uh, uh, before, after lens fragmentation is performed with the viscoelastic as it has been pre-dissected with a femtosecond laser, then we perform a hydro dissection in order to usually pop one of the segments of the cataract in the anterior chamber and make the procedure extremely easier. Uh, taking the opportunity here to fine tune the position of the intraocular lens and refill the anterior chamber with uh, uh, fluid in order to attain uh, a stable and uh, a watertight uh, procedure. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. This is John Kalopoulos signing off from Athens, Greece.